check this out. Hey everybody, I'm Giles and this is JDM World. In this video, we're gonna take a look at my Devastator build. Now, if you don't know what a Devastator is, check the link below, go check it out. It's a enclosure from GSG Audio for running a 21 inch sub and it's pretty crazy. Um, it's a fairly involved build and this video is gonna be kinda long, but if you're gonna build one of these, I suggest watching this thing all the way through so you can kinda see all the ins and outs of what you need to do to be successful. Now. To get started, we're gonna talk about a few areas before we actually start watching the build itself. And uh, first up, we need to talk about drivers, then we're gonna to need to talk about tools a little bit, um, some extra bits and pieces that you're gonna need, and then uh, a couple of notes. So first, let's talk about the drivers. Um, there are three different drivers that you can use for this. There's the BNC, the Lavoche, and the Eminence. And uh, like everything else, I've got links to those down below if you wanna look at the specs for each one uh, specifically. In this video, I'm using the Eminence driver, and uh, there's a whole story around that, uh, but uh, it's it ended up being okay at, at the end. But uh, if you wanna see the drama, take a look. Uh, I think it'll be right up here. I'll have a link to the unboxing video. So you can take a look at that and see, uh, see the process by which I got the driver and then kind of the drama associated with that. Now let's talk about tools and supplies. Uh, the tools and supplies that you'll need for this build are almost the same as any other GSG build. So if you've done one before, you have a good feel for it. If not, um, you know, I'll run through them now. First off, you're gonna need some glue. GSG recommends PL Premium. I've not used it. I'm a Type Bond 3 guy, so that's what I used for my build. Um, you're gonna need a bunch of clamps and you're gonna need big ones for this build. And unless you're using a brad nailer, you have to have clamps for this, in my opinion. Um, I'll have links to those below as well. Um, you'll probably want a rubber mallet so you can move some the pieces around as you need to without marring them up. Um, I use a small carpenter square just to make sure things are all you know 90 degrees and, and nice. Um, then when it comes time to finish, I recommend having an orbital sander and some type of bondo or filler that you can use for any cracks or scratches or anything else that you want to clean up before you put your finish on. Um, finish is going to be up to your discretion. I used a spray on Duratex and it really worked well, um, but these can be finished in a million different ways. You can put veneer or laminate or roller paint or spray on, that's gonna be up to you. You're gonna need some extra components, uh, the final bits and pieces to put everything together. Um, first and foremost is gonna be the speak on connector. You can use a regular speaker wire connector as well, um, but I'll have links to the speak on that I used below. Uh, you'll need wire and all of the crimps and little bits and pieces for inside. And really the, the wire you need is about yay long. It's not, not a lot. Um, I use 12 gauge. You can use 10. You, I think you can even use up to 16, but 12 has worked out really well for me and I've not seen any problems with anyone using that before. Uh, then you're gonna also need some Spax screws and some gasket tape. I'll have links to all that stuff below as well, but that's gonna be important at the very end to seal around the woofer and then seal the hatch door that goes in the back. And this builds a lot different than a mini Marty or a full Marty because with those, the, the speaker kind of just goes in and you gasket around that. With this one, the speaker is actually inside of the box. So you need a speaker gasket in the front. And then when you put that panel on the back, it needs to be sealed up as well. And the last thing to note is that this is a heavy box. I strongly recommend that you tackle this with a buddy. Two people are gonna make this thing a lot easier as you have to move these pieces around, flip them and, and put them together. It, it's really heavy and it makes it easier if you've got two people to help position things and then lock them into place with those clamps. Please hit that subscribe button and also click on the bell so that you'll be alerted for new videos as they're released. Um, and if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down's okay too. Uh, you know, it's a small thing for you, but the number of subscribers I have is a big deal for the channel. So if you're not a subscriber, I would really appreciate that subscription. And with that, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So what we're looking at here is unpacking of the full kit. Um, the take home message is that there are lots of pieces. So this one is, uh, is definitely more difficult than a full Marty build, but uh, if you get a friend, you'll be able to handle it no problem. 
now we're going to go ahead and jump into the build. What I'd like you to pay attention to is kind of the order that I'm doing things in uh, through these different steps. So what you're going to see is an image uh, from the instruction booklet so that you know what we're doing. Then what you'll see me do typically is dry fit the pieces, then I go through the glue up, and then the clamp down. And that's pretty much what I did for the whole build. You know, I'd look at the instructions, make sure I knew what I was doing. Um, I would try it out before I put glue on, then go through the process of gluing it and clamping it. Um, and even doing that, I made a few mistakes and I'll call those out as we go through the video. But if you do a dry fit before you actually commit to the gluing, uh, you'll typically be able to avoid most mistakes. Another thing that you're gonna notice is that I use a few additional tools in this build that I didn't call out at the beginning of the video. And uh, those primarily are gonna be uh, this glue brush. And uh, if you don't have one of those, it's pretty cool to use it. This one's got like uh, like a some kind of rubberized tips that you can get the glue off uh, really easy after it dries. Um, and you can you just rip it off and use this thing over and over and over. And uh, I use that pretty much throughout the whole build. Um, on top of that, I used a razor knife a bit to uh, help scrape off glue. And I also discovered that using a chisel helped with some of the dry glue quite a bit. One thing I worried about quite a bit throughout the build was trying not to mark up all of these pieces on the concrete. So that's why you see me putting towels down and putting this stuff up on tires. I also discovered that when clamping, it's really great to be able to get the clamps under the bottom of this thing. And if you have it sitting on the floor, it's almost impossible to do. So if you can find some way to get it off the ground, whether you're using a table or tires like I used, it'll be a big help. Now. This thing gets heavy, so if you're trying to lift it up to put it on a workbench, that could be a problem. So something a little bit lower might be better. One thing to reiterate here is that precision with the clamping and gluing of pieces, especially the ones where you're making things double thick, is really, really important because what you're gonna have to end up doing is sinking these pieces down into uh, the other pieces. And if you have this stuff off a bit, it's just not gonna fit well. So take time and, you know, as you can see, I'm checking every edge to make sure that everything is nice and flush. Uh, so check everything, check it twice before you clamp it down and let it dry. As you can see here, one of the things that you're gonna have to do is clean off dried glue. And uh, that's where the chisel and the razor knife really come in handy. Um, if you have dried glue that's on the ends, uh, it, it's gonna make things poke out and not fit the way that it ought to. And if you don't have dried glue, that means you probably didn't use enough um, and it didn't squeeze out when you clamp things together. So uh, just expect that you're gonna have dried glue that you need to scrape off. So if, uh, if you don't have a razor knife or a chisel or something, um, now's a good time to pick one up. Installing piece number two might be one where you want to take some extra steps that I did not. So what happens is once everything's all built, um, you can very easily see that engraved number two from outside of the enclosure, uh, you know, once, once it's done. So if you want to improve the aesthetics of the box, 
before you install it, I would suggest taking Bondo or filler and go ahead and fill that number two, let it dry and sand it down uh, so that once everything's built and you paint it, uh, it'll look like a smooth surface. Otherwise, you will be able to see this number two from outside of the enclosure if you take a close look. What we're building with these pieces is really the inside guts of the horn or maybe the band pass enclosure, however you want to think of it. So this is actually the chamber that the subwoofer is going to uh, play into, right? So uh, if their subwoofer was mounted now, it would be on the bottom side of that circle firing straight up and it fires into uh, the chamber that's going to be made with these two cross beams that we're installing and there'll be a front piece that uh, that creates the very front of the box. So this is a uh, part of the magic of the enclosure design. Another thing that you're gonna see me do in a lot of these uh, different build phases is add glue um, to all of the internal joints, right? So I'll put glue on, like you're seeing here, on the edges and I'll clamp everything down. But then I often come back and then just add more glue around all of the edges. Uh, the subwoofer inside of this enclosure creates a huge amount of energy and you want to make sure that absolutely nothing can move inside of this box. So if you can add glue to any joint, I recommend that you absolutely do it. Um, it won't hurt. Um, it can only help. Fitting this side piece was really difficult for me. Um, you know, I I have a lot of footage that I cut out where I was trying to figure out how to make this thing go on. Um, you know, things were off by just like a 16th or 8th or something, just a very small amount. So it was kind of difficult to get on there. So, you know, I ended up using uh, the mallet and, and some clamps and stuff to move stuff around so that it would actually pop on. Um, so the tolerances, get pretty close here so try and uh, try and dry fit everything so that you know when you're you, you have a piece that's sticking so that you don't put glue on prematurely and get yourself into trouble so just dry fit and give yourself time and uh, and, and make sure you know how things are going to fit together before you commit to the glue At this point, this enclosure is getting really heavy. And uh, as you saw there, I had to have my wife come help me move this thing around. Um, so there's a lot of moving and things that aren't necessarily in frame where I, I have had help. So it looks like I might be doing most of this by myself, but that's not true at all. I've had tons of help uh, moving this thing around.
what we're building here is uh, is the guts of the back of the enclosure. So if you had just a standard ported box, um, these braces are going into the part of the box that would just be like the, the regular back part of a ported enclosure. So uh, you have this woofer mounted inside of this box and this is on the back side of the woofer on the magnet side and there'll be a port that lets uh, that additional sound energy out of the front and that port is located just underneath the, uh, the larger opening for the horn or the bandpass piece. So yeah, there's a lot going on inside of this enclosure. So you guys get to see a lot of my garage in this video, and uh, if you take a look there, you can see the crates that my uh, Stark sound speakers came in. They're pretty cool. Fitting this piece is another example of where things didn't all line up just perfectly. So I actually had to use that clamp reversed to bow the sides out just a little bit so I could get this uh, piece to fit in and then I could uh, hammer it down. So this is where you get to decide if you're going to use speak on connectors or just regular banana plug style. Um, I like to use speak on for all of my subwoofers, uh, well my DIY stuff anyway. Um, I really like the cables and I like being able to be sure that things aren't going to come unplugged. Uh, so if you use that little insert and glue it in like I just did, uh, that allows you to easily mount the speak on connector. And this step is one where I really screwed up bad. So if you look at that piece, you can see that there's glue all over it already. That's because I glued it in upside down, right? So I put it in backwards. Um, luckily, I figured that out before things had dried and I was able to hammer it out. And uh, yeah, once, once you get this thing in there and if you let it dry, it's in forever. So be careful on that step. Now this step isn't in the instructions um, and, and it's not required, but I wanted to really get my edges as uh, smooth as I possibly could. So I used filler 
uh, pretty much all around the outside of this box and then sanded it off so that everything was really, really super smooth. And uh, it also kind of helps with paint absorption on those edges if you've got uh, something covering them up. A really good alternative that I didn't use here is uh, to do a glue and water mix on those cut edges of the MDF so that the MDF doesn't absorb so much paint so it makes it easier to paint. So that's another thing you can do. Um, also, if you notice uh, around that speak on connector, uh, it comes out of the box, so to speak, not quite flush. So I, I'm doing it right there. I sanded that whole thing down so the, uh, the back panel is completely smooth. And now for paint. So I'm not going to go into the painting in this video because that's a whole video uh, in and of itself. But I used Duratex with a little bit of water and it's the spray grade Duratex uh, with a really cheap paint gun uh, that I got from Harbor Freight and a air compressor that I already had. And I am no master of painting by any stretch of the imagination, but I was able to get a pretty good finish. And this is way better than, uh, than rolling on Duratex. And uh, also getting inside of those ports is really, really tough. So you wanna pay a lot of attention there. Now it's time for the fun stuff, installing the driver and getting the back panel on. So you need to make sure that you have a good seal between the driver and the two chambers. So I'm just using weather stripping um, and you'll need to use that around where the driver mounts and then also around where you're going to mount the back uh, back hatch for the whole enclosure. And that's what I'm doing here. This is where the back hatch is going to mount on. And uh, the thin stuff that I have is some Parts Express uh, speaker gasket specifically sold and very expensive for this purpose. And then the larger brown stuff is just uh, some uh, weather stripping that I got at Home Depot. One step that you don't want to skip is pre-drilling your holes. Uh, so make sure you follow the instruction manual on the drill bit size and the depth that you need to drill uh, for this enclosure. It's super, super important. Otherwise, you're gonna end up cracking this MDF and you'll be super, super sad. So don't skip the pre-drilling and you need to pre-drill uh, every hole on this back hatch and then uh, every hole that you're gonna use to uh, mount the speaker. Be very careful when you put this speaker into the cabinet. It's super magnet heavy, meaning that it wants to flip over. So you're likely to be putting it in just like I did, cone down with the magnet pointing up. And uh, just be careful because it absolutely wants to flip that magnet down. It's really heavy and it's way out there. A common question people have is, what size speaker wire should I use inside of the box? Um, I've used 12 gauge for every subwoofer build that I've done and it's been absolutely sufficient. Um, you can try 10 or even bigger if you want to, but I don't think there's really any value in that other than just spending a lot of money on cable. So I just uh, started making those little custom cables and attaching to the speak on connector uh, myself. So very straightforward, 
um, and nobody's ever going to see this, so it doesn't have to be pretty, but I still like it to be pretty, and I use uh, shrink wrap and other things on there just to uh, make sure uh, nothing comes apart. And that is how you build a Devastator. If you're working on your own build, hopefully it's been helpful to watch mine kind of start to finish. And if you're thinking about one, hopefully this helps push you over the edge. You know, it's not that hard to build this thing. It doesn't require a lot of tools. And if you've got a friend, it's really, really easy. Um, now, this was the build video and we had done the uh, subwoofer unboxing video before. And next, we're gonna do the performance video. This is where we pull out REW, take measurements, and see what the curve looks like. You know, how much space does it really put out at 20 hertz as opposed to 60 hertz, right? Um, this is supposed to be a mid bass monster, but everyone wants low bass in their home theater. And you know, you're talking 20 hertz, you know, 30 hertz and down. So we're gonna see what this thing can do. Remember, when you set this up, you still have to have a high pass filter to protect it against those low frequencies, you know, making the sub go crazy and killing itself. And then also, um, you need to bump up 20 hertz on this to make the curve a little bit more flat. And we'll talk about all those settings in the next video. So thanks for watching. Uh, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And if you've liked it, thumbs up. And if you don't like it, well, <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Have a great day. And I look forward to helping you guys with more videos in the future.